I see you lost inside your circumstance and I see you looking for a chance to dance and it seems to me the world's a better place because of you you were made to shine just like the stars above and I know you are made for love and to be loved and it seems to me the world's a better place because of you oh why do we see one another and compare our lives together thinking that the greener grass is anywhere but here shine shine set your eyes on things above now shine shine you are someone made for love now shine shine applause of love and shine Ain't it grand? Life is so worth celebrating Hand in hand Live a life worth imitating Sing along The world's a better place because of you Association of Tax Officials. We booked John Morgan for our banquet that we have every year for about 400 people in Athens, Georgia. And Mr. Morgan, of course, was being the George W. Bush impersonator. And I've been planning this banquet for a number of years. We've had this banquet for about 50 years. And I don't know that I've ever had a banquet as well received as Mr. Morgan's performance. Uh, I was, when I booked him, I was expecting just a, a comedian, somebody that would be lighthearted. His message was much more than that. It was it was uplifting. Uh, it was encouraging. Um, so uh, you know, he made us laugh, but he also uh, made everyone that was here feel better about themselves and their jobs. And everyone truly left happy. So we couldn't be happier with Mr. Morgan's performance. Well, I'm the free world leader. Freedom's rolling out to you. Oh, let's roll. Well, I'm the good news instigator, compassionate conversator. This freedom is rocking and rolling on out to you. Red and blue. Welcome to the John Morgan. to be with you everybody I, I'll tell you what I am so excited yesterday was a, a weird day for the show but it's because I was so busy in the middle of recording the last uh, the last vocals to my new song and uh, I'm gonna reveal 
not the song today because it's still being mixed and it's got to be mastered and all that and and uh, we're working on a YouTube video, but I'm going to reveal the name of it today in today's show. And I I mean it's just you know you're like it's a song whatever, but you know what I thought I would do to start off today's show, just before the show started, I got an idea for a song. It just popped into my head, and I thought well, you know rather than just uh, keep it all to myself, I thought I would let you guys in on the songwriting process a little bit, and that might be kind of fun. So I've got my guitar. One of my many guitars. A friend of mine jokingly said, my biggest fear is that when I die, my wife will sell my guitars for what I told her I paid for them. <laughs> Uh, in my case, <clears throat> my wife knows what I paid for him, so that's that's funny. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Rich, your biggest fear is that you'll die and your wife will sell the golf course for what you told her you paid for it. <laughs> uh, now that that right there, folks, that was funny. I don't care who you are. So <clears throat> I was thinking about how much I love James Taylor. In my life, I'm going to Carolina. Can't you see the sunshine? Can't you just feel the moonshine? And it ain't it just like a friend of mine to hit me from behind? Well, I'm going to Carolina in my mind. You like that lot? Those are those uh, hammer-ons and pulls off. Hammer-ons and pulls off. Pull-offs, if you can pull them off. <laughs> that's that's the distinctive James Taylor sound, and uh, I just love love his music. Um, love James Taylor, and uh, so I was thinking about how uh, in my life I have I've got this internal drive to do what the Bush family motto says, and that is to do the right thing. I want to do the right thing. I don't I don't always know what the right thing is, you know. But I, I want to do the right thing. It's it's a, it's a, it's it's a driver for me. It's it's a motivator for me. So I want to do what's right. I want to do what's wrong. I want to live the light. I want to sing this song. So that was that was that was the line that was rolling through my head just a few minutes ago before the show started, and I didn't really have much time to. Didn't have time to do anything with it, to be honest with you, other than to grab my guitar and just play it real quick. So I thought, well, I would share with you what I do. So I've got this little recorder on my phone, and uh, it's really cool. It gives you the little vibration thingies as you're singing, you know, so you can see the waveform as you're singing, which is a little extra treat for visual learners like myself. And so <clears throat> I'll take that little phrase and I'll record it. I'll sing it and play it. I want to do what's right. I want to do what's wrong I want to live the light I want to sing this song And that at this point, I might go, well, should I play a D chord or a B minor chord? I want to sing this, I mean, I want to sing this song See, both either chord works. It's just which way do you want the song to go? And then, so, so it would be a very simple chorus like that. And then... Uh, the, then the verse, that's, that'll be the chorus. Then the verses, you know how a song has a, a chorus that repeats over and over again, and then it has different verses throughout the song. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. See, that just popped into my head, so I just played what came to me. And it might be, and, I, and I'll just delete it, or it might be something cool, and I'll hang on to it. So, And then I'll just, you know, slowly allow the song to marinate and, and live in my soul. And Hey, Beth, welcome. Good to see you, Diane. Appreciate you. Good to see everybody on the show, Rich. And uh, so that's basically how I write a song. Now, this particular song that I'm working on right now, it, 
it was dropped into my heart like a like a flash drive. Okay, I say I wrote it in five minutes. I actually wrote it instantaneously because it was there. It was just dropped in, and it took five minutes to write it down. But it, all the content was just like instantly in my spirit. And so I, I want to say it's a gift from God. I hope it was a gift from God. You know, I'm hesitant to say that because it's kind of a big deal to say that, you know. But, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I was in the bathroom when I wrote it. So <laughs> should I say it? So, so anyway, you could say it was a download uh, during a download. But we won't say that because that's, that's crude and rude and, and it draws images that you don't want to go there. But anyway, so I wrote the the uh, two verses and the chorus and and began to record it actually and and uh, some folks wonderful folks like my dear friend Phil Kagi up in Nashville agreed to work on it and and uh, liked it and stuff like that and we get we're talking about maybe it needs a uh, a bridge you know what a bridge is you know when uh, when a song has a verse and a chorus a verse and a chorus and then there's a there's a whole different part, that's called the bridge, okay? And it bridges usually, uh, well, oftentimes a bridge is a, a a prelude to an instrumental part where you where the guitars roll, rock and roll, you know, and such is the case with my song. But I didn't have a bridge, but it's as as the story would have it, I was in that same bathroom, <laughs> and boom, just like that the bridge fell on me. <laughs> it was a bridge over troubled waters. <laughs> and so I, I wrote it down, and it's in the song, and it's all recorded. All the parts are there. So now it just has to be blended together and mixed and mastered, and, and I'll be able to share it with you. And, I, and you know, I'm excited about it. I, 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 I don't want to presume that anybody else will get excited about it, but I think so. It's a, uh, it's a song that is... Um, it, it's got a lot of potential, I believe. It's got a really great hook that is singable, and hopefully it'll get people singing it. And if people do sing it, I think it can actually make a difference in our world. And that's what I'm hoping for, that's what I'm believing for, and that's what I'm, I'm praying for. So, my friend and I were talking today about evil. We were talking about evil, and we were talking about how we can easily let things fly out of our mouths because maybe we watch The Office and it's funny and that's what she said and all this, and things that are really not not real appropriate, you know? And this was in a church setting that this particular inappropriate thing uh, was said. And um, and so, you know, and, and the, the, the millennial who said it just looked, you know, and said, what? That's just, that's the way everybody talks now, you know? And um, so... So we had this conversation, my friend and I, who's, who's a pastor, well, it was, I, I, I don't want to say who it was, um, because I don't want to get the person in trouble <laughs> who said it. Uh, we were talking about, you know, how do you know what's appropriate to say and not to say? How do you know, you know, your season, your, your, the, your seasoning, the seasoning on your, on your speech? How do you know what's, what's really what's right and what's wrong? And so I got thinking about how I used to love to see uh, charts where uh, things could be laid out visually. And so I actually have my iPad here. And uh, for your viewing pleasure, I learned how to uh, use my iPad and my pencil. Can you see that? Can you guys see that? Okay, I'm over my I, my. Uh, wait, can I can I add a little circle in here and put me in there? Oh dang! I don't see where I can put myself in there. Crop spring. Uh, well, I don't know, but okay. So, so okay. So just for giggles, I thought let's just let's just look at the two sides of life, and when we're and we're deciding what's right and what's wrong and how we should live and how we should not live, let's just consider uh, the fruit. You know, somebody was asking me 
how do you know if something's right or wrong? And I, and I said, well, the fruit of it will tell you, you know. Um, the, the book of Galatians in the New Testament, Paul was writing, and he said that the fruit of the Spirit, okay, this, so if you, if you think of your life as a tree and you're going to bear fruit, your, your actions are going to bear fruit, and the fruit of the Spirit is, there are nine fruits of the Spirit, and they actually wrote a song about this years ago to make it easier to remember. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith. And then they add, against such things, there is no law. It's, it's true. There's no law ever been written against doing those things, loving, having joy, having peace, being patient, being kind, being humble. The, the, there's no law against those things in the whole wide world. So it's really good. Those, those fruit are what you want to produce through your life, by your actions. And if you want to know how to see those things manifest in your life, just hang out with Jesus. Because John chapter 15 says, He is the vine and you are the branch. As long as you abide in the vine, you will bear much fruit. These are the words of Christ himself. As long as you abide in the vine, you will bear much fruit. And that is the fruit that you will bear, love. You want more love in your life? Abide in the vine. You want more joy, love, joy, peace. You want those things in your life? Of course you do. Who doesn't? Abide in, in Jesus, abiding in him. He is the vine. We are the branches. And so, yeah. So let's, just, let's go back to this little graph. Okay, so you've got, let's see, Noah here and Jesus over here. Okay, here you've got love, all right? Over here, now you can have love over here, but it's love of evil, okay? It's love of idolatry, and lo it's love of things that are ungodly, okay? That's loving the wrong thing. That's the wrong kind of love. Over here, it's hate, okay? The opposite of love. Who inspires you to hate your, 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 your brothers and sisters? Who inspires you to hate people that wrong you? rather than forgive them. So Jesus, his big deal, big, 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 is forgiveness. He said to the, um, the soldier that was nailing his hands to the cross, he said, Father, forgive him. For the, He actually said, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Okay, And over here, we're tempted to unforgive, to never forgive. Don't ever forgive them. Diamond and silk are coming up. <laughs> All right, so you've got forgiveness on one side. You've got unforgiveness over here. And, you know, my friend and I were talking about how, how the devil plays both sides of the coin. He will tempt you, okay? You did, he'll tempt you to sexual sin, tempt you to uh, idolatry, tempt you to all manner of things that are wrong. Jesus does not tempt you. Jesus gives you, and it's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Self-control. Yeah, give me some of that, okay? And over here, the devil, I love how he plays both, I actually hate it, how he plays both sides of the coin. He'll tempt you, and then after you sin, he'll come right behind the sin and condemn you. You piece of dirt. I can't believe you did that. You're no good. God wouldn't have you. He wouldn't touch you with a 10-foot pole. But no, no. Jesus, again, every time we sin, he's ready to forgive. Okay? Because, you know why? You know why the devil does these things? Because his number one goal is to stop you from getting saved. Okay? He doesn't want, he wants to keep you from God. Because ultimately, he wants you in the kingdom of darkness. Okay? forever and ever. And Jesus wants to give you, hallelujah, eternal life. Hallelujah. And so he'll tempt you to get you to sin, to keep you away from God. And then on the other hand, he'll condemn you and tell you God wouldn't want you. Okay? Nothing could be further from the truth. God wants you. He loves you. He's not mad at you. He absolutely is ready to forgive. That's what he died on the cross to, in order to do. 
is to forgive you of all your sins and give you a life that's holy, okay? Hallelujah. You don't hear the word holy on this side of the equation, okay? This side is unholy, all right? This is good, it's kind, it's joy, it's peace, good, kind, joy, peace, all those wonderful fruit on this side. On this side, it's just uh, all the yuck, all the yuck of the world. So, so I just wanted to encourage everybody, jump in with God 100%, and this is the fruit that you will bear in your life. Wow, that is so awesome. Let me see. I can, I can change my color, turn this into a Sharpie. Ooh, it's so pretty. <laughs> and it's right on my show. Can you believe I learned how to do that? Woo, I'm so excited. So anyway, hi, D. Welcome. Carol, good to see you. Oh, you love my artwork. Trust me. You know, I need to work on my artwork because if I'm going to be a George W. Bush impersonator, I need to be an artiste. Hmm. Well, let's just let's just give that a shot. Let's see. All right, let's see. Brand new sheet of paper. All right, let's see. All right. Uh oh. Wait. First, I got to pick the pen. Okay. There we go. I'm drawing you, D. There we go. <laughs> I'm an artist. Well, I don't want to bore you guys anymore. I love you. Have an excellent dinner. And uh, got steak in my future. Oh, yes, I do. You guys take care. You're the best. God bless you. Hey, this is Al Robertson from Duck Dynasty and Duck Commander. I want to tell you about a great book called War on Fear from my good buddy, John Morgan. Of course, he looks like George W. Bush, who had the famous War on Terror, so I immediately knew, you know, there was a nice uh, a bit of wordplay there. This book is fantastic. I think it speaks to sort of that natural fear that all of us have, whether it's public speaking or whether it's the first time you get asked to do something you've never done before, uh, up to, you know, the fear of, of loss of life, of, of a sick uh, person in your family, all the things that, that we face every single day. I recommend this highly. Forgot the big ears, did I? Okay. Well, fine. It's my show. I can unend the end if I want to. Pull my Apple Pencil back out. And add. Wait a minute. Hang on, hang on a second. <laughs> There you go, D. Doy. God bless everybody. <laughs> Have a great night. Hey, this is Al Robertson. Well, I'm the free world leader. Freedom's rolling out to you. for tuning into the John Morgan Show. Rich, I'm not going to go back again and draw a red hat. You did need some sunscreen on those ears, didn't you? everybody. Thanks for tuning in today to the John Morgan Show. I hope I can inspire everybody just a little bit. Trying to make it better each and every day. But May, I want to see your new car. <laughs> <laughs>